Soccer Mommy, Sometimes Forever album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning. Here tonight to chat about this latest from Soccer Mommy, a.k.a. Sophie Allison. She is a Nashville-based singer-songwriter. She's been at it for a few years now. And back in 2016, she started making some pretty big waves with her studio full-length debut, Clean. This was an album that a lot of people really loved. This was mostly due to the songwriting here, as well as the sort of lo-fi aesthetic, and I do understand the hype on it, and I like plenty of it too. I like your dog as much as the next guy. But overall, I wasn't too crazy about the project. Thought it was good, but not great enough to rave about. If anything, I was really much more into her follow-up album, Color Theory. Between the hazy, very glitzy production and the much more guitar-driven sound, I thought this was a better album. I know it's a hot take, but I'm sticking to it. Now, this has been an album that I've been anticipating quite a bit, mostly because, A, the singles to this album really rubbed me the right way. I thought a lot of them were really good, but on top of that, I didn't even realize that at first, but leading up to this album, it was announced that uh, Daniel Lopatin, aka One of Tricks Point, never was going to be behind production for almost this entire album. Strike that, actually, the entire album. Just double checking over here, but yeah, he was, and that's enough to get me to listen to just about anything. And truth be told, uh, this is the indie album that I needed to hear. This album starts off with Bones, and I, I freaking love this as an intro. It's to an extent where I expected to hear her. It's got that stripped-down riff. It's got those potent vocals. It's simultaneously a sort of throwback to the guitar-driven indie that I grew up with, but also like a fresh take on it, like an exciting, new, very polished chapter. It's really tender. I love the personal lyrics, the very subtle synths in the background, and a nice touch as well. It's just really good, and by the end of this track, it's a damn anthem. And shoutouts to Dan on production. I haven't really heard him produce anything like this before. I didn't know he had it in him, but clearly he does. Then we have With You. This is also just freaking gold. I love the kaleidoscopic, almost psychedelic or shoegaze-inspired approach to the instrumental on this track. It is a slow burner for sure, but I'm all for that. I also really love the synth work again. It just seems to be haunting this track, but it does so in a really good way. I mean, I can't get enough of her vocals as well. As a matter of fact, I can't get enough of a lot of this album. Unholy Affliction, like, I can't even begin to describe this track. This was my first kind of guess that this album was going to be a little left field. It certainly is. This is an intense, muddy, noisy track that takes a turn for the more experimental side. I mean, Dan Lopatin is absolutely in the house if it wasn't clear already. And I love Sophie's performance on this track. It's much more commanding, almost a little haunting at times. Only a little, but it is a chaotic and wild track that I couldn't take heads or tails of at first. But man, is it ever effective, and more importantly, it demands attention and re-listens. And Shotgun, quite frankly, I think it's the best track here. One of the best singles I've heard in rock this year. It is a gritty, guitar-driven indie rock tune with tons of passion. It's got a whole lot of personality, too. And once again, we're kind of at this crossroads of where indie's sort of been in the past in this exciting new chapter for it. It's catchy. It's wonderfully produced. It's really well-performed, too. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about a lot of this album. I mean, I'm still not wild about new demo. I mean, ever since this track dropped as a single, I kind of felt like it was a sore thumb for this album. It's one of the first times and only times on this album that I feel like the sort of more experimental edge to this album it looks more ugly than anything. That's bad. And that's not just from the production alone, because that actually sounds pretty cool at some points, but overall, this is just not my cup of tea. And for my liking, Fire in the Driveway is the worst track here. Of all the tracks here, this is the only one that comes off a little bland and faceless, and that's something I haven't been able to really say on this album. It's the kind of track that would have shown up on her debut, and I would have shrugged out and just kept walking. It's just so one note, and I can't tell you the first thing about it. Outside of that, Soccer Mommy, Dan Lopatin, they really make a great pairing. This album is much more exciting and re-listenable than an addict could have ever expected. Darkness Forever is a really interesting left turn. I mean, talk about Darkness Forever. This is easily the darkest and grittiest track here. The way this track creeps along with this practically trip-hop inspired instrumental is really compelling. I mean, one thing that I love about this album is the amount of twists and turns that it has. Sophie really doesn't feel comfortable staying in one place, but it never really seems too unfocused either. By 
by the end of this track, it's downright hellish with these noisy guitars and very looming atmosphere. Don't Ask Me is the exact opposite. This was a sort of late album single that dropped right before it uh, came out, but it's a really great one. It is bright, it is sunny, it's got this big, glorious riff, and then once again, these sort of neo-psychedelia tones to it as well. It also shows Sophie kind of dipping into some dream pop here, and it's really sweet, it's really tender. And that final sort of freak out guitar solo that we get, right on, man, that's great. Following Eyes, on the other hand, is a much slower paced, slow burning track with some incredibly personal lyrics, super confessional lyrics as well. Like I said, it's a very slow, very intense track. You really don't know what you're gonna get from track to track, and it makes things exciting. Sophie and Dan make a really great pair. And we get this chorus that opens up and releases so much tension. It is instantaneous and super catchy and just so likable. I needed this. And we end off the album with a pair of really great ballads. Feel It All The Time is very somber, very stripped down, but it has its own little unique flavor to it. I mean, between the hazy riff and the crystal clear production, Sophie sounds like a damn megastar here. And the sheer amount of longing that we get on this track is commendable, my god. And then this album ends off with Still, because god, this album couldn't get any more confessional and personal and emotional, my god. This is a stripped down ballad for the ages. From a performance stance, we haven't heard anything like this here. And that's saying something because it is jaw dropping and beautiful. Hell yes, this album is great. At the end of the day, this is the indie rock album that I needed right now. Soccer Mommy, Sophie Allison, and Dan Lopatin make a hell of a pair. I didn't know he had this in him. I didn't know she had this in her. It's a really exciting album. It is just what I wanted right now. It is a salute to the guitar-driven indie that I grew up on, but it is also a fresh take on it as well. An exciting new chapter full of twists and turns. I don't really know what I'm going to hear from track to track, and I personally love that. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about this album. It's freaking great. The hype is real. I'm feeling a strong eight on this down, but let me know what you guys think down below if you like the video be sure to give us a like give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future and until next time have a great day friends